so lovely, always lovely to see brothers and sisters on the beautiful Sundays, um, especially any and and I want to use this opportunity to uh, Audrey's not here, but I want to use this opportunity to congratulate Gary and Audrey and Eric um, again for their baptism two weeks ago, and welcome to the big family. Um, so today we'll continue to uh, walk the path of Jesus on his last week of uh, his earthly life, about 2,000 years ago. Um, and the topic for this morning is a warning against hypocrisy. Uh, it's Matthew 23. Um, I shared with some brothers earlier this week, uh, this is a rather difficult topic to share because um, I mean, every time that when Jesus gave us warnings, um, it's quite difficult uh, because truth hurts, right? And especially the truth if it's related to each one of us. Um, so before we start, let's uh, still have a short word prayer. Um, pray that God will show me the path of share something difficult like this. Okay. Dear Lord, thank you so much again for, um, for this opportunity to, um, to come and share with the brothers and sisters. Um, and we thank you that you um, provide this path, uh, the path of truth, that we'll be able to be encouraged, we'll be able to be warned, um, and we see the end is near, that we can be aware, um, and we are all prepared for your arrival again. Lord, thank you. Uh, we pray for brothers and sisters who are now with us this morning. Um, we ask you to bless their uh, safety. And also, um, also, we give thanks to the brothers and sisters who are here. And we can all enjoy your word, enjoy your spirit as one body, as one spirit. Thank you, Lord. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So the, the origin of the word hypocrite um, came from the Greek word hypocritus. Um, hypocritus. Thank you. I, I, like I know, yeah. I know why he, we have you for a reason. Yeah. Uh, hypocritus. That's awesome. Um, which means an actor or pretender, right? So in ancient Greeks, um, the actors, they often perform with their mask. So, um, so that's where the word comes in. And it also has a different meaning. The word is a mixture of the two prefix. Jaden, can you read those words for me too? The hypo and quinine. Quinine, that's right. So hypo means under, and quinine means to decide or to judge. So this is... This is a passage that brothers and sisters are very familiar with. Right? It is a passage from Matthew 7, um, verse 1 to 5. Um, it is about Jesus. It's, it's, one of the very, it's one of the first times that Jesus ever mentioned the word hypocrite. So can I have Isaac to read for me really quick? Thank you so much. Um, so this is the this is when Jesus defined hypocrite, right? There's a saying among Native Americans. Among Native Americans, that's right. Among, among the uh, the Indians, you point a finger, and there are how many fingers point back? That's right. So we, as a hypocrite, we oftentimes we overjudge others but underjudge ourselves right and 
Do you know how many times the word hypocrite mentioned in the New Testament? Right? 40. That's actually not a bad guess. Um, it's the book of the Gospel of Mark mentioned once, the Gospel of Luke three times. Uh, we couldn't find any word hypocrites in the book of John. But in Matthew alone, is 13 times. And out of those 13 times, we find seven times in this chapter alone, the chapter 23. All right? So Matthew, we all know what he did before he was called by Jesus, right? Right? He was a tax collector, right? So we can imagine he probably witnessed plenty of this kind of people throughout his career, right? So when Jesus mentioned the word hypocrite, he probably has a better understanding than all the apostles. The word probably stuck to him more than all the other disciples, right? So that's why he recorded this hypocrites more times than all other books. Um, and Jaden was pretty correct because we have about 19 times, uh, no, it's actually 13 plus three, what, what's, what's that equals to? 17 times. So I have 17 times the New Testament, and in Old Testament, it's about 20 times. So combined, it's about 40 times. But once again, the Old Testament was written in Greek, and the New Testament was written in other language, so it probably have different meanings. But the... So now we come to uh, the main chapter that we'll be sharing today, Matthew 23. So after the beheading of John the Baptist, by King Harold. Um, so from what I brought us here the past few weeks, what happened? We have all the Sadducees, all the Pharisees, all the teachers of law, right? They came and argue and challenge and make fuss with Jesus with all the different difficult questions, with, diff with, with all different scenarios, right? So finally, Jesus was fed up with all the balonies. And then he started to and then he started to re, 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 start to show his disciples and his people like who he was really dealing with. So when so um, Matthew 23, so we will break this, uh, we'll, so we'll focus on 12 verses today, uh, from verse 1 to 12. But I thought I will break down this to three different parts. Um, that's can we all read Matthew 23, 1 to 4 together? Then Jesus said to the crowd and to his disciples, The teachers of law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy chromosome loads and put it on other people's shoulders and then themselves are not willing to leave a finger to move them. Right? So we, we, we don't really exactly know what Moses' seed uh, looks like nowadays, uh, but the concept of Moses' seed actually came from uh, Old Testament, Exodus chapter 18, um, verse 13. It said, the next day Moses took his seed to serve as judge for the people, and they stood around him from morning until evening. So this is the picture, this is um, some picture that we took uh, in St. Paul's Cathedral when we went to London this summer. This actually picture took it by Nathan. Um, so it's, we will probably, the Moses C looks like something like this, right? So we have a very fancy seat uh, in the middle of atrium. Um, and we have the Pharisees or we have a teacher of law sitting up there and have people to come over and he can interpret or he can explain the laws of Moses to his people. Um, and also, besides Moses' seat, it's also, in today's context, it is also a place of authority, right? It's similar to the word bench, for a judge, for today's for a judge nowadays. 
and the judge may be said to occupy the bench, and the judgment may be called the ruling from the bench. So Moses' seat is for Pharisees, right? Just like what I mentioned before, Moses' seat is for Pharisees to explain the laws to the people. And, and he continues, right? So these people were sitting on Moses' seat, and, but he also said, you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. So the term that preach, do what I do, not what I preach, came directly from this verse right here. Right? And, but Jesus, pay attention here, Jesus still honors the law of Moses and the spiritual authority even as he confronted the hypo hypocrisy of the Pharisees. And Jesus still tells them to obey the commandment, the Moses commandment from God, but do not do what these people do. All right? And we continue from Matthew 23. So this is the second part of the verse 1 to 8, 1 to 7. And can we read this together too? Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries right and the tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honor at banquets and the most important seat in the synagogues. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplace and become a rabbi by others. So for those of us, I mean, I didn't know this before, so for those of us, the phylactery and tassels, they look like this. So the ancient, or the not the ancient Jewish, like the Pharisees and teach of law, they use this little box to, what they do, what they use for. They put all the verses and all the commandments in a little box when they do morning prayers. And they write all the verses on the tassels, just like our scarf today. They write all the verses over there so they can show people how much they know. So as they grow bigger, as they grow up the steps, the box becomes bigger, the tassels become wider, right? So we say, okay, this is what ancient Jewish people do. But even today, in, in today's Israel, they are still half them as their outside garments, right? That's what, the, uh, that's what they have nowadays. And so what is so what is hypocrites and why hypocrites are so annoying, right? Jesus told us hypocrites is they do not practice what they preach, and also everything they do is done for people to see. And it's a good reminder for all of us. And the uh, life way, this is a, a church, uh, this is a, a company, they did a survey. So among the Gen Z people, do you know what Gen Z is? And this is the chart, if you don't know what category you fall under this, you can uh, use this as a reference. So among Gen Z, you see the number two, church members seem judgmental or, hypocrit or hypocritical. It's one of the main reasons why Gen Z people don't come to church anymore. But among millennials, like people like us, people in our age group from 1980s, so in our 20, late 20s to early 40s, the number is even higher. It's 66%. So a lot of people, we grew up in church, and then we end up not coming because that's a reason we use. We think people, we think the church we go to are very hypocritical, very judgmental, right? But um, uh, Charles Spurgeon, who, is, who was one of the greatest preachers last century, right? He once says, if you wait for a perfect church, you must wait until you get to heaven. Right? Does that make sense? Right? Even Billy Graham, 
the, uh, the, the, the great preacher just passed away, says, right, if you find a perfect church, don't go, because if you go, you will ruin the church, right? <laughs> so, so and, 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 and it's a true story. So, uh, Charles Spurgeon loved to smoke, and the guy on the left, the guy on the left, is uh, it's also another great preacher from last century, D.L. Moody. Uh, the Moody Institute is named after him. So this is a true story. So one day, um, D.L. Moody never met Charles Spurgeon. So he took a trip to London to visit him. And as he knocked on the door, Charles Spurgeon came out with a big cigar I mean, in his mouth. And then D.L. Moody said, how could you, a man of God, smoke that cigar? And Theo Moody, being a short and a little bit choppy person, Theo Moody, Spurgeon, pat Theo Moody's tummy, said, the same way that you, a man of God, could be that fat. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so everyone, my, 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 I, 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 I told, I mean, I, I, I shared this with my uh, wife this morning. My wife says, so this is very discouraging that like you are telling me that everyone in the church is hypocrite. But what did God tell us to do? So we continue on. The third part of chapter, the third part of this um, passage is God is teaching us how to not be a hypocrite, right? So uh, can we read this couple of verses just really quick? But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers, and do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant, for those who exalt themselves will be humble, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Right? Here, and, 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 and this is the, uh, and, and I just want to, uh, this will be, this next two sheets will be our, will be used uh, for our discussion later. So um, I'm going to airdrop the two sheets, the questions to you, uh, to, to uh, brother and sister later, so we can discuss. But um, the, same, the same company or the same uh, survey company also did this survey and asked about 7,000 questions from different congregations. These 10 questions, action like Jesus and attitude like Jesus. And at the same time, they asked the Christians another 10 questions self-righteous actions and self-righteous attitudes. And this is the result of their findings. Um, so the X is Christ-like, and uh, I mean Christ-like on this side, and Pharisee-like on that side. And Y is uh, Christ, uh, the, sorry, the X is attitudes and Y is the actions. So here, most of us, or most of people, they find we fall under this fourth quadrant. So half of Christians nowadays, to be honest to ourselves, we are like Pharisees, right? And you say, okay, just not us, not us. But this is also a survey from different <laughs> congregations, uh, even evangelical, Catholic, practice, so the findings are right about the same. So if we are honest to ourselves, we are a lot like Pharisees compared to Christ, right? So Gandhi, the Indian founding father once says, I like you, I like Christ, but I don't like Christians because you don't look like Christ. Right? So, but this is today, um, but also something encouraged is 
even back 2000 plus, I mean, even the, uh, not about the, about 2000 years ago, in, in this scenario, right? Uh, a lot of, and this is a passage people, uh, brothers are very familiar for as well. In Galatians 2, 11 to 23, when Paul confronted Peter in the church of Antioch, right? Can do, can anyone tell me what happened here or before and after? Yes, please. Um, basically, Peter. Yep. Right. Yep. But the second his his buddies came. Yes. Uh, he stopped eating with the Gentiles and like Eric was he was afraid that he'd get judged by his close friends and maybe he'll like lose relationships with them. And and as a result, like all that like like it was like hypocrisy. Yes. Thank you. So Paul so Peter had this vision. Right, had a vision from of all the different food, and then he was called by the Lord to eat with Gentiles. So he was eating char siu, he was eating roast pork, very happy, have a big feast. And then when he had some Jewish friends came over to the Kenyak, and he pretend that he is all holy again, right? He's all Jewish again, no pork, no seafood, and then Paul. Paul point directly to him that this is wrong. And, but the most important thing is what's Peter's attitude afterward, right? So Paul did this not to criticize Peter and to show how holy he is. He did this to help Peter, to help Barnabas, and to help the church in a whole. And Peter did not react negatively to the rebuke, right? And he didn't react discouraged or despair. And he was able to continue and learn and repent. And then became, and we all know what happened to Peter afterward, right? He became the first person who murdered uh, and died on the cross upside down. So Peter, so it is the, our attitude On this second part of what we just read, the greatest among you will be your servant. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. The take, the, what I take from this verse is a servant or someone who wants not to be a hypocrite has to be humble, has to be sincere has to face whatever prevent us from someone we, want, we don't want to become, right? So for someone who always, I mean, we, 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 we don't ever call ourselves hypocrites, but I was in Chinatown the other day uh, and, buying, buying, and buying food, and, um, and I don't have enough cash on me, so I... I, I, I end up saying, okay, can I pay credit card? And then uh, when I got my receipt, um, I was charged by extra about $5. And I, and, 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 and I was looking at the receipt. And then turns out if I pay cash, I don't need to pay tax. If I pay credit card, I need to pay tax, right? So there was, so, so, at a, so the, the, the thought at the time came to me and said, okay, why didn't I pay, I mean, why didn't I pay cash instead? Right? So oftentimes when we accuse other people of stealing, are we stealing at the same time? Right? Are, we still, are we trying to avoid tax by, trying, by, by doing something that we are not supposed to, well, they are, they are, we are helping other people to do something that they are not supposed to do to help save a little money from our side. Right? So this, so the, uh, the, not only the, uh, Jesus told us to be humble, Jesus also told us that if we decide to repent, if we decide to make new again, 
we can be new creation according to 2 Corinthians 5.17, right? We don't have to live ourselves again. Just like Gary and, Brother Aud- and Sister Audrey and Eric, they decide to take this step to get baptized. So we want to renew ourselves. We're going to become new. So we are no longer living in the old world and we can be a new world with Jesus, right? So I'm glad I, I did the first part because the second part of Matthew 23 will be even harder. Will be the condemnations from Jesus um, with uh, Pharisees. Um, and I'll pass that difficult sermon to, uh, to uh, the two brothers next time. Okay, so here's, um, here's uh, he, this is my sharing this morning. Um, and as we break to small groups, I'm going to uh, airdrop the questions to um, two brothers, and uh, we can all discuss together. Okay. I can also bring back to the-